All right, so let's take some notes. Title this notes with today's date. And the title should be solving quadratics by completing the square. All right. Okay, so so far you've learned how to solve two ways. Okay, you've learned how to solve by square rooting and you've learned to solve by factoring doing oh by the way don't write this down by square rooting and by factoring using x method well what happens if square rooting doesn't work and factoring doesn't work so I'll give you an example problem where it doesn't work Okay, you definitely cannot square root this because it has an x term. If it didn't have an x term, you definitely could square root. So, this, so if you try to factor this, well, you would first get it in standard form because it's not in standard form. The 15, I mean, this has to be set to equal to 0. I would minus 15 to both sides. Okay, now it's in standard, standard form. If you try to factor this using x method, look at what happens. 1 times 1 equals 1. I need to get negative 15. So if I try to give a 5 negative, I'll get negative 15. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Adding it is not negative 8. It's negative 2. So, but if I switch and give the negative to the 3, it won't work either because I'll get negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. Okay, now if I try and use 15 and 1, negative 1, I'll get 15 minus 1, which is 14. If I give a negative to the 15, I'll get negative 14. So, Obviously, factoring doesn't work, and you know you've come across problems like this before. So what we do is we use a different technique called completing the square. So what we want to do, um, what we mean by completing the square is this. If we can get it in this format, square, something square equals a number, remember that? Then we can square root both sides and get an answer, plus or minus a square root number, remember? Yeah, that's what we mean by completing the square. If we can get this to be a, a square number equal to a number, then we can do this. So the first step you do is move the C number to the other side. So I'm going to write this first step. Move the C term, the one without the X, to the other side. That's step number one. So what we do is we add 15. That's the C term, the one without any x variable. So it's going to go to the other side of the equal sign. We're left with x squared plus 8x here equals 15. So we have this gap here. All right. What I want to do is make a perfect square trinomial out of this. A perfect square trinomial is something that looks like this. And don't write this part yet. A perfect square trinomial is like x to the 3 squared, or x to the 5 squared, or x to the minus 2 squared. These are x plus 3, parentheses, x plus 3. That's what the square means. This means x plus 5, parentheses, x plus 5. Okay. This means x plus minus 2, parentheses, x minus 2. I'm trying to get a perfect square trinomial on the left-hand side of the equation. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 8. So here's the step. Step number 2. 
divide b by 2 then square it which is power 2 raise it to a power 2 okay so what you do is you take the b number so on the side here I'm going to take the b number which is 8 divide by 2 I get 4 what's 4 squared 16 that's the number I add to this blank here I'm going to add 16 but if I add 16 to the left hand side of the equation I must add 16 to the right hand side of the equation okay well what happens is this the right hand side you just add 15 plus 16 is 31 and then you factor this Okay, but I'm going to show you a shortcut. When you factor this, you're going to get a perfect square trinomial. This will become, look at this 4, x plus 4, parentheses x plus 4. Check it out. This, if you distribute this, you're going to get x squared. 4x, and you've got another 4x, which will give you 8x, and 4 times 4 is 16. Okay? So by doing this technique, divide the b number by 2 and then squaring it, power 2 it, you get a perfect square trinomial right here. This is a trinomial, perfect square right here. So this x plus 4 parentheses x plus 4 can be written this way. Alright? Okay, now we have it, it in this format. Remember this format? Something with an x in it raised to a power 2 equals a number. We get to square root it. Remember that? Now we get to square root it. Yes, there is a 4 in there, but the 4 is in parentheses with the x. So it's okay. We can square root it. So the next step is square root. So you're going to square root that going to square root that and the answer is x plus 4 the square root and the square symbol just like the x squared when you square root it the square root symbol and the 2 goes away you have just x they cancel each other out so I have just x plus 4 equals root 31 actually it's plus or minus root 31 remember when we square root we always get a positive and a negative answer we're almost done we want x to be by itself, that means we want the 4 to go away. To cancel it, I would minus 4 to both sides. The answer will be strange looking, but it's alright. This cancels out to 0. Bring down the equal sign. We have a negative 4 plus or minus root 31. Okay, so we know that this is um, all that we can do with this answer, we cannot add the 4 and the 31 because this is not really 31, it's root 31. This is approximately 5 point something. So you can't add these 4 and 31 and get root 35. Okay? So we leave the answer just like that. And know that it is two, you have two solutions. One of the solutions is 4 plus root 31 and the other solution is 4 minus, I'm sorry it's a minus, minus root 31 okay there's one solution right here here's a second solution right here that plus and minus gives you two answers okay that's just a reminder so there when we do the completing the square the solutions are ugly they're not a whole number that's why we were not able to factor them and get a nice whole number we do a different technique and the answers turn out ugly, just like we expected. Okay, so I'm just going to circle that. That's our solution. All right, so that's your first problem doing um, completing the square. Just remember, this is a new technique. Look for the B term, divide it by 2, then square it. 
the, the, the B number that you divide by 2 is the number that you get your factor from. Let's try another problem. I know completing the square is awkward and hard. I don't like it either, but something I have to teach you. Here's example 2. Let's see which other one I was supposed to show you. Okay, let's do example number 2. Okay, solve for the roots. All right, this is not in standard form, yet I want to make this equal to zero by subtracting one. Okay, and I know if I try to factor this, I'm not gonna spend time doing that, but if I try to, there's no way I'm gonna be able to factor. So the first step is, I'm going to, um, actually I should have left the, the one on the other side, huh? Because when we do completing the square, we want the C term on the other side. Remember that? Yeah, so let's just get it back to the other side. Okay, we have a gap here that we're going to fill in by looking at the B term. Take the B term and divide it by 2. The B term is 4. Divide that by 2 and I get 2. Now square it. 2 squared is equal to 4. That's what goes in here. Plus 4 to both sides. And I'm going to get 5 here. I'm going to get two sets of parentheses here. I'm going to get an x and x. It's the number that I haven't squared yet that gets to go in the parentheses. This number, the plus 2. Check it out. If I distribute this, I will get x squared. Whoops, that should not be an x. That should be a 2. Two times two gives me four. If I distribute the two x here, I get two x. Distribute x and two again. Another two x. Two x plus two x is four x. That works. This is a perfect square written as x plus two parentheses squared equals five. Now I'm allowed to square root it. And I'm just going to get x plus two equals plus or minus root 5. Now I'm going to minus 2 to both sides to isolate x. x equals negative 2 plus or minus root 5. So I have two solutions, negative 2 plus root 5 and negative 2 minus root 5. So there I just solved it. Let's try another one. Example 3. Let's try a different variable just so you get used to it, okay? r squared plus 8r plus 13 equals f of r. All right, f of r is kind of like y, okay? Well, we know we want to make y equals to 0, so I'm going to equal 0 that. Solving doesn't change that process of making the x-intercept, um, the y-coordinate of the x-intercept, 0. Now I want to move my c term. This is not factorable. I'm going to move my c term to the other side by subtracting 13. I'll get r squared plus 8r that cancels out to 0 equals negative 13. Now I have a hole here that I'm going to fill in by taking the b term. The b term is 8. 
divide that by 2 and I get 4 and then square it I get 16 so I'm going to add 16 I'm going to get r squared plus 8r plus 16 equals 3. Okay, this will give me factors in parentheses. r goes here, and the number it goes here I already have is the unsquared number, this 4. And this just becomes r plus 4 parentheses squared equals 3. Now I square root everything. Square root that side. Square root this side. r plus 4 equals plus or minus root 3. Now I subtract 4. r equals negative 4 plus or minus root 3. I've got two roots there. A negative 4 plus root 3 and a negative 4 minus root 3. There we go. Let's try some more until you start getting used to doing this, completing the square stuff. Let's try t squared minus 4 equals 2t. Alright, so now our equation is not in standard form. We have to make this y um, equal to 0 to solve for it. So I'm going to subtract 2t to both sides. t squared, I'm going to put the t term next, and then the 4 equals, this will cancel out to 0. If I try factoring this, this would not work. So I'm going to move the c term to the other side. This cancels out to 0, this becomes 4. Now I go look at the b term. The b term is negative 2. Divide that by 2, I get negative 1. And negative 1 square it, I get 1. So what goes here is plus 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And I'm going to get factors in parentheses t goes to the left of the parentheses and the number that goes here is this is negative 1 okay so negative 1 negative 1 so I get negative 1 parentheses squared now I'm in the right form to square root everything t minus 1 equals plus or minus root 5 and I have to get rid of that minus 1 by adding 1 1 plus or minus root 5 that's my answer I've got two solutions 1 plus root 5 and 1 minus root 5 I hope this is starting to get a little easier for you. Let's do another one. Two H squared Okay, um, I picked the wrong one. Let's do 4 h squared. 4 h squared plus 4 h equals 5. 
Okay. Now, is this um, in standard form? No, I would have to make it equal zero, but wait a sec. If I make it equal zero, it's not factorable, and I'm going to have to move the C term over anyway. So can I just leave it this way because the C term is where it's supposed to be? Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now I look at the B term. The B term is 4 divided by 2, I get 2. And I raise it to power 2, I get 4. That's the number I add to both sides. Okay, now think about this. I'm going to have to have h here and h here. I want it to be the same number, but I need to be 4h. If h times h just gives me h squared. I need 4h squared. I need numbers to be the same. So I'm going to use 2 and 2. Okay, it's slightly different. And the number, the second number it goes in is a number that haven't been squared, that number there plus 2, plus 2. So now it's 2h plus 2, parentheses squared, equals 9. Now we square root everything. Two h plus two equals plus or minus root nine. Hey, isn't root nine one of those perfect square that we recognize? What's that? Yes, you're right. Root nine is three. So we have a plus or minus three. So that's something that we haven't encountered before. Our roots have been not perfect squares, so we've been leaving them. But when they come out to be perfect square, we have to finish it. Leaving root 9 would be wrong. That would just be 3 now. Almost there. Now we're going to divide by 2 to both sides. And then we're going to divide by 2, everything by 2, and we get h equals to negative 2 over 2 plus or minus 3 halves. Okay, I think this one we can finish. This is the same thing as, isn't negative 2 over 2 negative 1 plus or minus 3 half? Yeah? Okay, so we're going to get two fraction answers that we can finish. There's one answer is negative 1 plus 3 half. Oops. And there's another one, negative 1 minus 3 half. All right? Here, let me write it over here so I have more room. Let's do the plus first. H equals negative 1 plus 3 halves. I need to make this into a fraction over 2. So then I can add fractions. You know what I mean? So I want both of them to be fraction over 2. Well, that would be negative 2 over 2. All right? This becomes negative 2 plus 3 is 1 half. So there's my first answer. H equals 1 half. All I did was uh, I did the plus version. Now I had to do the minus version the negative 1 minus 3 half. h equals negative 1 minus 3 halves. So changes into a denominator of 2. So it's going to be negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 halves. So there's my second h answer. So that's unusual. Completing the square and we got actually got a nice whole number rather than I mean nice fraction rather than um, square root answers. Okay, so sometimes that happens too. All right, so just recap real quick. When you do completing the square, these are the steps that you need. Move the C term to the other side of the equal sign. Divide the B number by two, then square it. Then you're gonna be able to do the square root, okay? All right, that's it. See you tomorrow.